it's me again! And today's date for you right now is Friday, October 21st. Only 10 more days to Halloween. One of my favorite holidays. It's an American tradition here. I'm actually recording this the night before, so I'm still in the past. Because I figure by the time I, I do this, I can get out to you on Friday, and this stuff is still fresh in my mind. I just got back from taking my puppy to puppy school for the puppy classes, and I'm trying out my new headset. I've had complaints about my microphone and the left ear, and you can't hear me, and adjusting sound. I don't know about this microphone. I, You know, it was great on my old computer, but with this new computer, I don't know what's the issue, and... I don't have anybody here like to show me like Bur Lady look, just let me do it for you. Click here, click here, click here, we're done. Yay, nobody's doing that. So let's try out my new headset. I got this in today. My old headset broke, I need a new headset anyways. I decided to go for a festive, nice green color. So MMTLP had good price action today. Like I said, we're on the up. Expect MMTLP to do this until the S1 is approved. How will we know that the S1 is approved? You will see dates on the S1. I'll put them here. These blank dates, it says 2022. You will see like an actual date in there. It could be October 21st. It could be October 24th. Who knows? I did see the number 24 happen a couple times today in different scenarios in different contexts, different places. I kept seeing the number 24. We'll see. It's one of those things where you like, once you see something, you see it over and over again. So it's the night before and I had a lot of requests to analyze the Diamondback acquisition of Firebird Energy. Diamondback, otherwise known on the NASDAQ as FANG, Acquired Firebird Energy in a $1.6 billion deal, which is great. Firebird Energy last year acquired some old Chevron assets, which they were working on at the same time, more or less, when ConocoPhillips was selling their older assets. Companies were kind of selling off older assets in preparation to get new assets. Firebird got these older assets, and now Diamondback's acquiring Firebird in this, in this deal. These assets are what you call bolt-on assets, so they're either right adjacent to Fang Wells, or Fang already has a partial stake in these wells, and they're just buying out Firebird's portion of them. Let's say Fang, otherwise known as Diamondback. Diamondback's ticker symbol is known as Fang, so I often refer to Diamondback as Fang. So maybe you know, Fang has a 10% stake in these wells, and Firebird owns the other 90% working interest stake. Fang might be buying out that stake. That's the two definitions that mean a bolt-on asset. It just bolts right on. It's right there. It just goes right in. It's either next door, and it's easy to get to, or it bolts right in. You know, you already have a stake in it. You're just buying out somebody else's stake. Okay, so today's video involves a lot of math and a little bit of basic quantitative analytical skills. For those who are new to my channel, I am known for doing math. Also, it's very hot in this room right now. It's pretty warm. Uh, as a result, I'm sweating. Okay, I turned on the AC, so hopefully I won't be glistening as much. I'm at that time of the year now where it's cold at night, so I don't really run the air conditioner but it just got too warm in this house. So we're gonna do some math today. You So with this deal, this was for basically all of Firebird and it's 72,000 acres. The acreage is already pretty well developed. They already have wells on there. It's bolt-on acquisition. All right, that's gonna be a bear argument is people are gonna say you can't compare this Firebird acquisition to the Or Grande because the Or Grande is 
you know, raw land and you're paying for just the oil. That's all I've ever really talked about is just the oil, value of the oil itself. I've delved into other assets before. I've talked about pipelines and how much a pipeline would be worth new, how much a pipeline's worth used, although that value has gone up substantially. I've talked about other things like water and how much it costs a truck and water at the end of 2021. That was before gas went great guns. The price of fuel. But today, we're going to use some analytics just to get to the oil and evaluate only the oil itself. So the numbers I give you are going to be much lower than the deal because this, uh, this accounts for many assets that Firebird had. Hence, we're just going to go down to the brass tacks and get to the oil. Luckily, this article talked about how much oil there was or an estimate how much oil there was. So far, there is no presentation yet. ConocoPhillips, when they acquired the Shell acquisition, they had a very nice presentation the day the sale was announced. It was incredible. It was great. This one, okay, no presentation yet. I checked on the Diamondback website. We only have this article. But this article does give us a very good indication of how much oil and gas there is. Now, we don't know how much exactly there is of each. They didn't give percentages. Some articles have given us percentages. This one is together oil and gas. You will see the letters BOE, which means barrel oil equivalent. That's oil plus gas. Usually you evaluate them on two different things. So today consider it to be an average. Today consider it to be an average. I took that into consideration when I did my mathematical evaluations here. The article states they have about 10 years worth of inventory. 10 years worth of inventory that's pumping it out now and they're pumping it at a rate of about 22,000 BOED. That means barrel oil equivalent a day. That's oil plus gas. How much gas is in a barrel oil equivalent? It's 6,000 cubic feet of gas is in a barrel oil equivalent. That's fine. This is all measured in BOE. We're on the same measurement for everything throughout. Some, some articles will give you this many barrels of oil itself and this many thousand million trillion cubic feet of gas. This is all on the same scale of measurement and the same denominator. So it makes things a lot easier for us. We don't have to do any of that stoichiometrical conversions. If you take 22,000 BOED and you times that up by 365 days a year on average, you're going to get about 8 million and 30,000 barrels of oil in a year from these wells, which are 98% developed, by the way. Now, you take that 8 million, 30,000 times 10, they said about 10 years. I'm not sure when the peak life is on these wells. He said 10 years. It could be less than 10 years. Also, gas is evaluated differently than oil is. As a result, let's just take the average of 10. Okay, that's a good average. That gives you, if you multiply by 10, it gives you 80.3 million barrels of oil are in this reserve. Okay, the sale is for this many barrels of oil. 80.3 million, that's two M's, million. Thousands, one M, millions, two M's in oil and gas. BOE, barrel oil equivalent, it's oil plus gas. Or Grande has 3.2 billion, with a B, barrels of oil itself plus gas, which we're still waiting on more defined numbers. We have very r wide range of estimates, but we're waiting on those a bit more focused numbers. So you take the average. Right now, WTI is an $87 monthly average. If you want to do a yearly average, it'll actually give you a higher number at this point. I got criticized in Burley. You take the six month average. You take the 12 month yearly average. If you take the yearly average WTI is actually pretty high. Let's be conservative. I was trying to be conservative. 87 WTI, that's the monthly average right now. So you minus the cost of goods sold. The current national average for cost of goods sold is about $35. It can be as low as, you know, 26 if you're Exxon. Or it can be high as, you know, 37. Right now, average is about 35. You're left with 52 bucks. 
That's the cost to produce one barrel oil. $35 includes the taxes. Now you times that by your multiplier, in-ground multiplier. Oil in-ground multipliers is anywhere from 12 to 18 percent. The ore grain days have gone as low as 10 because it's a large amount. It's a bit far out. This one's adjacent property, so we'll go a little bit higher at 15. And I'm just doing the oil. I'm not doing any of the wells or any of the infrastructure on the property. We're just going with the oil. So we're going to do 15 based on the fact that it's pretty close. It's right next door on the current property. If you multiply these two numbers, you get 7.8. That's how much the price of oil is in the ground. 7.8 dollars a barrel the next question you want to ask is what's the you know stake in this is this for 100 percent revenue interest or is this 75 percent revenue interest what's the revenue interest that we don't know that we don't know but we'll say you know this this does a pretty good job of taking out if it is higher at 18 percent it does a pretty good job of taking out any you know royalty holders Firebird did have some royalty holders as the fact that they had owner relations on their website. That's if you own the property and you're either selling them most of the mineral rights or all the mineral rights and you just only have a lease. Some people want to retain those mineral rights, at least a small percentage, as a royalty. It's always nice. So we'll say $7.8. Again, these are averages. I don't have all the exact information to get into like really fine pinpoint specific things. It's a good guide. $7.8 a barrel times 80.3 million barrel oil equivalent. Again, that's the average oil plus gas. We're not sure how much, but it's a good average. You're left with $626.34 million. The sale was what for? 1.6 billion. And this is how much the oil is worth. Now, 626.34 for 80 million barrel oil equivalent. We know that the Oro Grande has at least 3.2 billion barrels of oil itself, plus gas, which would be a higher BOE or barrel oil equivalent. So if you want to extrapolate that now, Oro Grande is not adjacent to really anybody, so as a result, I've always discounted it to 10, up to 10. It's a lot of oil. You can discount it up to 10. And I think that's a pretty good guide. Now my dogs are in here. So I hope that helps you understand, you know, give you a basic bare bones, quick and dirty, you know, napkin math estimate. Also, because it's in the evening, uh, it's time for some wine. Today's canned wine, I'm still on a canned wine kick, is the Stella Rosa. We're drinking peach. There's nothing tropical about it. It just says peach. I'm on a canned wine kick. A friend of mine gave me a couple cases of canned wine. No, I'm not a fan of peach. I think this is pretty good. You ever try doing math? Not drinking wine, I'll tell you that. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Like I said, with MMTLP, we're still waiting on the S1 to be approved. Dates to come in, PR to come out about the record dates. But people wanted me to analyze the Diamondback acquisition of Firebird. Again, Firebird got their assets recent assets from Chevron, their older assets, and if you extrapolate out what this article says, it goes to about, you know, it could be a little bit more, but about 80 million barrels of oil. It's pretty well developed, and it's right next to, or on, the Diamondback properties. They either have a stake in those wells, or it's next door, hence it's called Bolton. Bolton is very convenient, and you're paying for the convenience fee of this. It's a very easy acquisition for them. Also, Diamondback says that they can pay this off within two years, and they're going to sell some assets now to get out of debt, some older assets, according to this article, and they will be on the green on this asset within two years, which is pretty cool. They're going to go, like I said, full steam ahead, those 22,000 barrel oil a day, 
for two years, so just over 700 days, probably 800 days before they're in the grid. That's great. Good for Diamondback. Oh, and upon this acquisition, the price of Diamondback Energy went up. It's now about $142 a share. Diamondback also has the variable dividends, by the way, which means you get a quarterly dividend of a fixed fee, but then in between that you get a variable fee, which can be up to like $3, $3, $4, depending on their profits. Pretty cool is variable dividend. Upon hearing this acquisition, the stock price went up. Imagine if the Or Grande was acquired by a big oil company. How much would the price go up? People are afraid, like, oh, once we get shares in a big oil, the price of that stock will go down because everybody will just sell. Well, upon hearing the acquisition of, you know, 80 million, 80 million barrels worth of Bolton energy, the price of Diamondback went up. Imagine what the big oil company would do if this were to sell for a big oil company upon the press release of, you know, 3.2 billion barrels and up of oil. It has a good chance of going up. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Goodbye.